Hello everybody and welcome back to Battletech for what I expect is probably the penultimate episode here. We'll have to see how the timing ends up working out, but I suspect that this might be the second to last episode. We have successfully taken this region over here and we need to defend it from these rather small mechs that are closing in. Like they're all mediums or lights. <laughs> okay. So I think first things first, we're going to get I'm the King here. Crab into cover. Moving to position. And we're going to do a cold shot on the cicada. Just to increase our hit odds. That got a little laggy there, but uh, the cicada has been heavily damaged. Fantastic. Now, it has no more evasive pips, so we're going to fire on it with the Annihilator, but I think I'm going to avoid firing the Gauss Rifles on the Cicada, and we're just going to fire the UAC-5s. Oh, he has, like, no armor left. Solid connection on that one. It's a leg destruction. That's a very dead Cicada. If I had called shot at it, we probably would have straight up killed it there. But we don't have visuals on any other mechs, so we're just going to take the Battlemaster and sprint it down over this way to get visuals on the 45 tonners closing in. That is a Vindicator and a Blackjack, I believe. Yep, that's a Blackjack. Standing by. Okay. So we will go ahead and sprint forward with the Banshee as well. And we'll let them move. It's a Javelin. Two evasive pips. It's a very dead Javelin, actually. The King Crab took an irrelevant amount of damage. Nice try. But that's a Battlemaster with five evasive pips. <laughs> For reasons. Yeah, that's a better call. But even then, you did an irrelevant amount of damage. Congrats, Vindicator. The Cicada gets up. And what does the Cicada decide to do? An interesting choice. Okay. Do we have LOS on the Javelin? Yes, we do from the King Crab. But I'm going to use the Annihilator here. We're going to fire the Gauss Rifles at the Javelin. And the AC-5s. And medium lasers at the Cicada. Actually... We're going to fire the AC-5s at the Javelin as well. The Cicada should die from the medium lasers. Multiple targets confirmed. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Hostile removed. Two mechs in one turn. Very nice. That means that the King Crab can now move over this way. Rolling. And we're going to multi-target here as well. The large lasers on the Blackjack, and all of the missiles on the Vindicator. Confirmed. Okay, not ideal placement on that torso, but it's, it'll have to do. It's fine. And we got a, a head hit on the Vindicator. I'll take it. You. We're just going to move in with the Battlemaster here. Confirm. Can we multi-target? No, we can't. So I think we're just going to focus our fire on the Blackjack. Okay, that could have gone a lot better, but it also could have gone a lot worse, Critical if hit, I'm Commander. honest. Ready for all. And the Banshee can just ooze its way on in. And I'd like to finish off that blackjack, honestly. Engaging with I really hoped he'd die there. It's because the AC-20 hit the leg that he didn't die. But that'll have to... that'll have to do. Let's go. We'll get to move go. once more before he does. 
right? Oh, actually, he's in phase two, not in phase one. Okay. So we will not get to move before he does. Approaching the Battlemaster with the Vindicator is a bold move. These guys are suicidal. They're never going to get through this armor. Yes, Commander. Go punch the Blackjack. Location confirmed. Yep. This is why you don't approach a battle master Destroy. as a heavily damaged blackjack or as a vindicator. Receiving you. Banshee oh. can go ahead and walk walk in over here. We may not kill the vindicator depending on where we hit this. And of course, we have some overheat going on. We'll have to avoid firing these three medium lasers. We hit basically everywhere but the CT. We did hit the CT, but not very well. That's okay. That's something you want done. Yes, I do. The Annihilator can finish the job. This is our final round of Gauss Rifle Ammo. We are not going to fire three of our medium lasers. This is a very dead Vindicator right now. Roger that. And there we go. Hostile eliminated. My Gauss rifle is empty. Yes, indeed it is. But also, so is the list of enemy mechs. Nicely done, Commander. Sit tight and hold the facility. My forensics team should be joining you within the hour. So now we have to defend the facility, right? But we're completely fine to redeploy. You know, it would make consecutive deployments a lot more difficult if we didn't get our uh, ammo reloaded. That'd be a lot more difficult, actually. You'd be forced to bring additional mechs. Actually, I would be in favor of that. That would be a, a quality change, I think. It'd be way more difficult, to be sure. But it'd be pretty fun, I think. You have to keep in mind your ammo levels. Like right now, we'd want to swap out for the Bull Shark because it's got Gauss ammo and the Annihilator does not. That'd be pretty cool. That mech you wanted is back online. That mech is ready to fight, Commander. Excellent. Congratulations on a battle well fought, Commander. My forensics team is on the way to take possession of the mercenary base. After they've scoured the base's computers and identified the mercenary's client, we will proceed to attack our ultimate target. Sounds like a plan. We'll hold the base until you get here. Commander, please forgive the intrusion, but we have little time, and there's business to discuss. Identify yourself now. You need only know that I'm a friend. I'll get straight to the point. When the members of Force Commander Singh's forensics team go over the base you just captured, they'll find evidence pointing in the direction of House Steiner. They'll find this evidence to be both credible and compelling, but it's a red herring. If Singh follows it, he'll be walking into a trap. You know about this how? My organization trades in information. We know a lot of things. And when an opportunity presents itself, we know how to exploit it. What kind of opportunity are we talking about? One of Singh's chief political rivals owns an armory on this planet. My employers are extremely interested in obtaining this armory, and you're in a position to deliver it to them. I'm calling to make you an offer, Commander. If you play your cards right, you can come out of this run with a satisfied client and a variety of classified battle mech components. Interested? What would we have to do? Replace one bundle of misinformation with another. I'll supply you with files to plant on the base's computers, a simple task for Dr. Murad, I imagine. When Force Commander Singh's forensics team digs through the files, they'll point to the armory. We have people positioned inside of Singh's re salvage recovery team. Do this for us, and half of whatever they find will become yours when the job is done. What about Singh? He'll still have a dangerous enemy out there. That'll be true no matter what you do, but surely that's good news for you, eh, Commander? More danger means more opportunity for mercenary work. The important thing is that Singh will think that his troubles are over in the short term, and he will have you to thank for it. 
So, we're not going to do this. I want it to be harder, so we're going to refuse the deal, and we're going to go through with the, uh, with the trap. And it will be glorious. We also don't really care about the chassis, right? This is the final flashpoint, and uh, we've already gotten our score, so it doesn't matter. You're out of luck, friend. We don't deceive our clients, period. In that case, I'll take my leave of you. But know that you just turned down a lot of rare salvage, and for no tangible benefit. I was wrong to reach out to you, Commander. You're considerably less savvy than I was led to believe. Oh yeah, that's me. Not savvy in the slightest. When Force Commander Singh's forensics team arrives, I'm going to show them a recording of that conversation. Maybe something our anonymous friend just told us will help them sift through whatever false intel was planted here and get to our real target. That would be nice. Okay. Let's go. This is an assassinate mission? Okay, this is an assassinate mission. Well, off we go. Yeah, I'm I'm aware the Annihilator needs Gauss ammo. Thank you for telling me, game. <laughs> I suppose we could put a heat sink on there so that it would stop doing that. It wouldn't necessarily be the worst idea, but then I wouldn't remember. I mean It's too late now. But it would have been better to put a heat sink on there, because this is the final flashpoint. We're not gonna refit that with another ton of Gauss ammo. So I should have put a heat sink on there. But for now, we need to destroy the target and escape. According to the information my team pulled from the base you captured, our target, my enemy, is one Murdoch Dawan, a small-time political extremist from Killarney. He's here, in this basin. Destroy him, and you'll be well rewarded. Nice, clean, and simple. Just the kind of job I like, and just what we'd have missed if we'd taken our shadowy friend up on his offer. You made the right call, Commander. Now let's finish this thing. That one is here, in this basin. According to the intel my people dug up in the computers you seized, Dawan is a political extremist whose juvenile philosophy, juvenile philosophy begins and ends with eat the rich. Dawan's attacks on my family and my colleagues' families? Random violence. There was no vendetta, just a perverse ag agenda of a small man with something to prove. And the fabricated evidence on the warehouse's computers? What was the deal with that? Darwin wanted to provoke me into attacking House Steiner, an entity that he views as synonymous with the money delete. Without your help, he probably would have succeeded, and I'd have been lured into a blood feud with a juggernaut. I may not have survived such a conflict. But now Darwin's lies have been laid bare, and I see my enemy for who he is. Do you hear me, Murdoch? On this day, my mercenaries will bring you to justice. They can try saying, I will spit on their corpses, and then I will spit on yours. A lot of people have said that to us, sir. Okay. I'm just looking at this approach here. This is really rough terrain. Let's stick to the water. Heading out. We shouldn't have any armor issues, in theory. If I were planning an ambush, this is where I'd put it. No, absolutely. He's got additional bodyguards over here. Yep. Position confirmed. We need to make our way up over this little bridge. On the way. And then from there, it'd be ideal if we come over here and take these guys down across this. We can't really close in like that, so maybe we would need to go down over here. I changed my mind. We're going up this way. Confirmed. Aye. This is a much better no approach. Problem. We've got On cover here, we've got water if we Ready need it, position. and we can fight these guys straight up in close punching if we have to. This is definitely the way to go. Yeah, that's a 50 tonner, an enforcer. Okay. They tickled the Annihilator a little bit. That's kind of my fault for having the Annihilator up front. Time to earn our pay. It's another 50-tonner. Firing on the Battlemaster, that's fine. Hmm. It tickled. 
Probably a trebuchet. It's a 50 tonner. It did not fire. It's an LRM-5. Okay. It's all good. They've got a fair number of missiles over there. They do have a phase two mover, but now it's our turn. What's up, boss? Mongoose? Core out this enforcer if you can. Affirmative. That wasn't very great at hitting the CT, but it's all good. Waiting for orders. Mainframe, I would like you to finish the job. Now let's see how you handle this. That was really not very good. <laughs> we missed both large lasers. Okay, we will close in with the Battlemaster. That shows us the Trebuchet, as well as a Hunchback 4P. That thing is going to overheat pretty quickly. Okay, that Enforcer is nearly dead. We will close in with the Banshee, but we're going to need to actually sprint. Yeah, that's not great. Okay. Their turn. It's a 20-tonner. It's a 35. It's definitely a trap. No doubt about that. But it's one that I'm happy to spring. They've got a 50-tonner closing in over from this side, as well as a second 50-tonner. Okay, the PPC missed the Battlemaster. Yeah, that did very little. Now the Trebuchet is going to actually do something here. Yeah, the Battlemaster is starting to take a bit of a beating. Now the 4P comes in. And he's going to overheat himself here. That could have been way worse, actually. It wasn't great for us. But that could have been a lot worse. They have a lot of mediums. Yep, that is expected. Oh, they have another one out there? They have so many. Get him banged up pretty good. Okay, and then that enforcer just braces down there. Well, they have another one out there yet, too. Just how many mechs do they have here? I'm losing armor bad. Oh, we need to start eliminating them. I'm here. Gonna take the Battlemaster back and put it in cover. Order acknowledged. There we go. And I think we will fire on the Trebuchet. All right. Ah, we missed the AC-20. That is unfortunate. I'm your Spaniel. King Crab, get into cover. Onward. I want you to also attack the trebuchet. Punching all the buttons. Okay, the trebuchet is now a much, much smaller threat. Commander. The annihilator can actually only hit the trebuchet from here. We could step out into the water though, potentially. Because I would really, really like to core out this hunchy. Firing on target. Just like that. One more for the kill board. Fantastic. 
Ready for orders. And now I want our Banshee to kind of be the focus for the enemy. So we will step forward with the Banshee. And we will fire on the Trebuchet. Confirm. And that's one dead Trebuchet. Tango down. Let's go. Let's go. Fantastic. Locust coming in. That locust is not much of a threat at all. Jenner on the way in. Okay. Losing armor. Yep, that's exactly what we wanted you to be doing right now. Their pair of 50 tonners over here are closing in. That's a 55-tonner over there as well, attacking the Annihilator, which is not ideal. Systems holding. Enforcer is going to jump and fire on the Banshee. That's fine. That's actually really bold of it. That's good for us. Okay, additional fire on the Banshee. Armor is holding. Yep, seems fine. And here goes their two heavies. They definitely heavily outnumber us. But here's the plan. We put the Banshee forward right here. The Banshee's goal is to kill the Jenner. This turn, right now. We're in water, so our heat is going to be a little better. Okay, Jenner is dead. Fantastic. Next, the Battlemaster steps... Do we step forward? Yeah, we do step forward. Battlemaster steps forward to right here. Its mission, kill this Enforcer. It did not succeed. How much is left? Two hit points. Okay. The King Crab will finish the job, and we'll get some work done on one of these Hunchback 4P. Actually, the 4G is probably the bigger threat. So we're going to toss a large laser at the Enforcer here, although we're going to need to hop into the water. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to multi-target... We're going to fire a single large laser at the Enforcer and hope that it kills it. And then on this Hunchback, we're going to fire all missiles. Splitting fire. Perfect. We've taken out half of their mechs. And a good armor reduction on that Hunchy. Now, the Annihilator is going to step into cover here, and we are going to fire on the Locust. I'm not going to bother firing the Gausses, though. We're going to just fire the UAC-5s. Hit odds were low, and it was in cover, and our ammo is running low anyway. The Locust can now die to punching, since it decided to move forward. Fantastic. Okay, the 4P is going to go there. The 4G is going to go there and fire on the Battlemaster. That was exactly where I hoped that it didn't hit. What's in that arm? Arm mods. Can't take much more of that. Indeed not. That, however, is completely fine. Fantastic. And attacking the Banshee. Okay. Go for it. Damage minimal. 
Unfortunately, there really isn't a way that we can turn the Battlemaster to be safe. So we might have to just back the Battlemaster off here. We'll have to see if the arm survives these heavies. Okay, that seems good. Why are we bringing the Banshee instead of the Atlas anyway? And the Battlemaster instead of the... instead of the King Crab? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, apparently we are. So I do want to get the Battlemaster moved somewhere slightly safer. We're going to precision strike this locust. Okay, that was not ideal. Critical hit, Commander. Yeah, Commander. but it wasn't ideal. So we'll move up over here with the Banshee. And I think we will multi-target something along the lines of this. We're going to have to avoid firing some of these weapons, of course. Like so. And I think we'll fire the SRM-6 at the Hunchback 4G as well. Our, our hit odds are not great. Splitting target. That's a dead locust. Okay. We did some damage. I'm here. Now, Rip the Annihilator is going to turn its guns on the Griffin. We're going to Precision Strike right in the CT. Roger that. One dead Griffin. Hostile eliminated. Fantastic. And with that, it's time to put in a cut here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, I think we're going to finish this series. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.